The Cybertruck 300 from Ataku has raised the bar for electric mountain bikes less than $1,000. If you're looking to get into mountain biking but don't want to spend a fortune on a main brand, full suspension bike, this is a good option to get your feet wet. Now it's not full suspension but does offer a decent front fork suspension, a very sensitive pedal assist, and has a flashy paint job that makes you feel like you just bought a high-end bike. So let's dive in and see what the 300 can do starting off with a speed test. This is the speed test. I've got a flat stretch of trail here that I've used before. Now I should get up to 20 miles per hour on the highest pedal assist level, level five. The fastest bike so far in this price range of zero to $1,000 all-terrain bikes is 22 miles per hour. I'm gonna show you how fast you can go on all five speed modes, starting off with level one. For pedal assist one, I had the fastest speed I've seen for that level at 17 miles per hour. Pedal assist two was a couple faster at 19. For pedal assist three, I got 20 and pedal assist four and five both topped out at 21 miles per hour, which does beat the speed rating by one and almost tied the record for the fastest bike in this price range of 22. Now the 300 comes with a 500 watt, 750 peak motor in the rear hub, which ties for the biggest motor in this price range. Now that's powered with the 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery, which is also the largest in this price range. Now that does take three hours to recharge, is removable, has a battery level readout and an on and off switch. I thought it was one of the easier batteries to remove. Usually these types of batteries with it outside the frame are kind of tricky to get on and off. Uh, not so much with this one. Now the 300 weighs 50 pounds, which is the second lightest bike in this price range and can carry a rider up to 308 pounds, which ties for the highest weight capacity in this price range. Well, let's find out how quick that power can take me up to the top speed. I'm gonna do a test between straight throttle and pedal assist level five and see which one is faster. And for this test, I do have one battery bar missing. The acceleration between the two is pretty much neck and neck. It's hard to see on the video, but I felt a quicker takeoff with pedal assist than I did with the throttle, which most bikes are the opposite. And I'd say the 300 has the quickest acceleration for both pedal assist and throttle in this price range. Okay guys, this is the range test. Now I should be able to get 18 to 31 miles. At least that's what the bike is rated for. Now, I looked on the website and Metaco said that they measured that range with no wind, a temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit, an even 16 mile per hour constant speed on a flat surface with a 168 pound rider. Now, I've got a pretty flat trail. I'm 185 pounds. There isn't any wind and it's about 53, 54 degrees. I'm going to set up the pedal assist level five. I've got a full battery. I'm going to start my tracking app and see how far I can get. Here's everything I liked and didn't like about the 300, starting off with a 6061 aluminum frame. Okay guys, well if you like a bike that has a lot of riding and color to it, this is the bike for you. Mitaki was plastered their name all over this bike, but I think it still looks cool. I've always liked the black frame with the white and red. I think they kind of have to dress up these cheaper bikes to attract people's attention, so I get it. Mitaku has two models to choose from. I did review the other one a couple months ago if you want to check it out, but the 300 comes in either white or black and cost $899. Now as far as the geometry of the bike, uh, it's not my favorite. The handlebars are pretty low. I'm 5'11 and I've actually lowered the seat so I didn't have to lean so far over. Now I couldn't find a size rating for the bike, but I will say you'll find it a little uncomfortable the taller you are. I haven't been able to find like a super steep hill on this trail. I found a smaller one where I got the bike up to 25 miles per hour and it handled that speed very well. In my experience, when a bike starts to have a little speed wobble, it's about the 25 to 30 mile per hour range. And there was no sign of any wobble when I hit 25 miles per hour. And it can handle sharp turns too. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, those sharp turns on this trail. So I just did some figure eights between these uh, lines and it handled it very well. The longer I rode the bike, the more impressed I got. It's very well balanced for the price, even more than bikes that are more expensive. The motor is quiet even when climbing and there was no cracking or popping and squeaking along the frame, like I typically see on these cheaper end bikes. If I had to guess the price of the bike based on the fill and handling, I'd say it's in the range of a $1,300 to $1,400 bike. The length of the handlebars is good for the bike. It's a good size for the bike. I've got nice control and I don't feel crowded. So really like the length. The grips are pretty cheap filling. They're hard and not really that comfortable. And the throttle's also hard and feels cheap too. The seat is pretty hard. I think you'd wanna have some padded gear if you're gonna go for long rides. Now the most impressive feature with this bike is how sensitive the pedal assist is. Typically in most bikes, even higher end bikes, when I'm 
popping the bike out, I stop pedaling. It's usually about a half to one second before it stops giving power. And then when I start back up pedaling, it's about two to three revolutions before the power kicks back on. With the 300, it is almost instantaneous. I mean, I'm just super impressed with how sensitive that pedal assist sensor is. In my opinion, that's what separates a higher end bike from a lower end bike. And so being less than $1,000, I was kind of expecting a very long delay in the pedal assist, and that's just not the case. And then the throttle uh, delivers full power. It doesn't depend on the pedal assist level, which is my favorite type of throttle. I like that design. Man, this motor is just one of my favorites I've seen, especially for a bike in this price range. I've just got a nice even cadence and this trail has a few hills, you know, little small hills. And as soon as I start to climb, I can feel that motor just kick in. It's got some good power and does a very nice job of keeping the bike you know, at a nice 20, 21 miles per hour. It's the best motor I've seen on a bike in this price range by far. I wanted to give you guys a power update. I just lost another battery bar. I've got two left and I'm still hitting 20, 21 miles per hour. It has very good power consistency and the acceleration feels just like it did with the brand new battery. 15 minutes later, I was on the last battery bar and the bike was still averaging 20 to 21 miles per hour and even had some pretty good power for hills. When I got back to my car, the bike still felt like it had a full battery. Usually when I get down close to the end, I feel a big decrease in power. I never felt that with the 300, so it probably could have gone a couple more miles. Now my app recorded just over 21 miles while on pedal assist 5, maxing the bike out and stopping about a dozen times throughout the ride. Elevation gain wasn't that bad at 618 feet. That is low for what I usually get. Now 21 miles is 3 over the lowest rating, so safe to say if you rode the bike a little easier than I did, I think 31 miles is definitely possible. It's time to test the off-road capability of the 300. It does have 27.5 inch off-road tires. They're not the knobbiest or beefy tires I've seen, kind of average for a bike in this price range, but it does have a front fork spring suspension, so I came out here to see how uh, both of those features are going to handle this uh, bike trail. This is just a Green Raider trail. I've been out here probably about a dozen times and it has some sandy and rocky sections. Most of it is hard pack and pretty smooth. So I think this affordable uh, bike would do pretty well on this stuff. So we're going to figure that out, see how it does. I'm in a sandy spot here. Tires are slipping a little bit, but uh, doing better than I thought they were going to be doing. It's not deep sand. There's about a couple inches on top of hard pack. Got a nice rocky section here and I can hear that kickstand rattling. I should have taken that off. I usually do when I do a, my off-road test because I just hate the rattling and the banging around that every kickstand has. I gotta be honest, like this is kicking butt. This is doing so much better than I thought it was going to. You're definitely not gonna wanna take this on like super rocky stuff, but you find a nice hard pack trail with a few, you know, smaller rock gardens and you'd be fine with something like this. I'm also impressed with the uh, hill climbing ability it has. This trail's got some pretty steep sections that are short, but you know, well over the rating for the bike of 10% grade. I do gotta work at it, but it's able to give me just enough to get to the top. The motor on the 300 produces 50 newton meters of torque and is rated to climb a hill up to 10%. I just measured this one in front of me and it's like 9.6, 9.7. Now in this same category, a couple weeks ago, I reviewed a bike by Anchier, which is the highest selling bike on Amazon. I took that up a 13% grade hill, so a little bit steeper at five miles per hour. So I'm curious to see how this bike is gonna handle this hill. I've got one battery bar missing. I'm on pedal assist level five, and I will be pedaling as I uh, make my way up the hill. Still gaining speed, 10, 11, 12, steepest part here, holding at 12. Coming up over the top, out down to 11, back to 12, and we're there. Wow, this made light work of that hill. I mean, granted, it's a small hill. It's probably uh, about a block long, but 12 miles per hour for a nine to 10% grade, that's pretty impressive. Okay, I'm at the top of the hill. I just came up for the hill test. The bike has dual disc brakes and I'm gonna test them going down the hill. Gonna hit about 20-ish miles per hour. Slam on the brakes, see how smooth they are, if they squeak at all, if they pulsate, and uh, let you know what I think of them. Ooh, we're 
sliding. Oh, there's a little bit of squeaking, but uh, those are actually very smooth and didn't pulsate at all. I did skid the last 10 feet, but they stopped me about 25, 30 feet. And I did stop at the steepest part of that hill. Very good brakes for this price range. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what it would be like to ride this without any power. So I'm gonna switch the pedal assist down to zero and that does cut all power. Uh, I don't have any power with the throttle or pedal assist. I do have the battery on and I probably guess that weighs about six to seven pounds. I'm gonna go through the gears and see how hard it is to pedal without any power. Now this is the lowest gear and I'm going five miles per hour and I can definitely increase it. That is very easy. That's a little better. Kind of mid-range for gears now and going about nine miles an hour. I'm actually gonna increase to the highest gear. I got some good resistance now, but still manageable. I mean, this is a very flat area here. I mean, it's, it's a lighter frame bike for this price range and you can definitely use this without any power. The 300 comes with a backlit LCD screen that is basic and easy to navigate. Okay, so hold down the power button for about three seconds for the screen to come on. And that displays battery light, pedal assist, the speed and odometer. I've already reset the odometer, which you can by just holding the plus and minus button down. Plus and minus to increase or decrease the pedal assist level. Tap the power button to switch between different readouts. There's no walk assist mode or lights. It does have a front and rear reflector, which I didn't add, but uh, there is that option. And that's pretty much it. Easy and straightforward screen. The Cybertrack 300 comes with an IPX4 rating, which means it can withstand splashing from any angle a one-year warranty, and ships in three to five days. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds, here's what you can expect. A top speed of 21 miles per hour for both pedal assist five and straight throttle, making it the second fastest in this price range. The fastest acceleration in this range taking just over 13 and a half seconds to reach 21 miles per hour. Range is also one of the best with over 21 miles while maxing the bike out and stopping a couple dozen times. Hill climbing is one of the best, tackling a 10% slope at 12 miles per hour. And brakes are also nice. They don't pulsate or squeak and have some decent stopping power for an affordable bike. As far as a budget mountain bike, this is a pretty good option. It would be hard to find something better. I've got the link in the description if you want more info. Also check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com for all my reviews. I've got them sorted by price and capability to help you find the right bike. Before you go, hit that like button and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and take care.